Hey there, thanks for joining me today. My name is Brad Mandry, and this is lesson one in getting started with C Sharp. Um, we're going to do an introduction to the C Sharp language here. This will be um, a multi part tutorial uh, on throughout the, uh, for the actual language itself. And we're, this, these, these tutorials are going to be geared towards programmers that, um, that are just wanting to get into the language that have uh, very little to none. Um, uh, programming experience or maybe to the programmer that knows a little bit about programming maybe another language and and wants to get into the C, C, the C sharp language here um, by no means am I am I saying that I am a grand master when it comes to this particular language here um, you know I don't know everything there's about the language I learn stuff uh, new every day and that's the fun thing about programming is you know I love I love learning new things um, so if you come across something that uh, that I say or I show you that um, is is wrong or maybe could be done a better way or or um, or something like that, you know, by, by all means, certainly let me know. Um, like I said, I, I enjoy learning new things. So let's go ahead and get started with our lesson here today. And uh, first thing we're going to do is uh, we need to um, get and install the Visual Studio 2012 Express Edition. Um, so what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and uh, open up a browser here. Use your favorite search engine, doesn't matter which one you want. Um, I will use Google and search for Visual Studio 2012 Express. Um, in here, um, the I don't know what links will come up for you. Um, doesn't matter which one you choose. Um, if you see one that has a download similar to this here, just click that one. And that'll land us at the, the download page for the, for the program itself. And we're going to want to choose the Professional Edition here. And we'll go ahead and select English for the language. And a couple different options here. I'll just do the, the download now. And it comes up, and you want to run or save it, and we'll just go ahead and save it. And it looks like it's completed, so now let's go ahead and click on Run. Say yes to that. And the, the installer here will uh, um, go out, and it's going to um, download the rest of the application, pretty much. What we just downloaded there was just a basic mini web installer. Um, and it wants to know where our download location will be. I'm going to change that to just my desktop. You can put it wherever you want. It doesn't matter. You can keep it in the default location. That would be fine. And we'll say OK. And we'll click Download. Now this message here, if you do see this, um, don't worry about it. Just put a put a dot in the radio button. It says download packages from the internet. I've installed this previously, so it it thinks that it may be there and it's looking for these other installer packages. Um, so just go ahead and put download packages from the internet. If you do have this message up, click retry, and it'll go ahead and uh, it'll get all the stuff that it needs to install the actual program. Once this is done, we'll be right back with you. Okay, now your uh, your downloads there should have completed. Um, next step, what we'll do is we'll go to the place. Uh, where the downloads were saved to, whether that be your default downloads or like I did right on my desktop here. The file we're going to be interested in is the vs underscore professional.exe. Let's go ahead and uh, double click on that to fire it up. And it's going to do a basic installer here. Uh, it's going to ask you where do you want to install it. I'll leave it at the default location there. I agree to the terms of the license. Uh, the terms and conditions. Um, I do not want to join the Experience Improvement Program right now. So we'll go ahead and click Next. These are the different options here that it's going to want to install. Um, I'll just leave them all checked there. No big deal. And go ahead and click on Install. It may ask you for uh, um, elevated rights. Uh, if you have Windows 7, the user account control will pop up. Um, just go ahead and say yes or okay to that. And then it's going to go ahead and through the install. Uh, the install, depending on your system, um, could take some time, um, up maybe 45 minutes to an hour, depending on what your system configuration is. I know a restart, uh, at least one restart is required. It may require two restarts. Um, so when this is done, uh, we'll come back when we're, when we're all finished up. All right, now the install should be complete there for you. Um, now let's go ahead and uh, open up the program here. So let's go ahead and click on the Start button, Programs, and see if we can find it here. should be under like Microsoft Visual Studio 2012, and then click on Visual Studio 2012. 
Now when it opens up for you for the first time, it, uh, it's going to have to set up the environment. Like I said before, I've had this installed. And um, it's going to ask you for like what type of environment you want. There's a list of things you can choose from. Um, just go ahead and choose C Sharp Developer. And then there's going to be um, what type of help system do you want installed. There's like minimum advanced and none. Um, go ahead and choose the, the minimum option. That will require a one gigabyte of uh, hard drive space. Once you have that done, click OK um, there and it'll go ahead and set up the environment for you. And once that's completed, you should end up at a screen that looks like this. Um, yours is probably white. Uh, mine's black. If you want to change the colors, um, you can go into Tools, Options. You have Color Theme, Dark, and Light. Um, I like the dark. That's just my preference. You can do whatever you want, though. It doesn't really matter. All right, so this is the actual environment we'll, we'll, where we'll be writing our code. And uh, we're not going to go into too much um, detail on, on the actual environment itself right now, because as we work through the lessons, you'll you get more familiar, more comfortable with uh, where things are and how things actually work. So the first thing we're going to do here uh, is we need to create a new project. We need a project. Uh, the project will create a solution, and the solution is kind of a container for our particular project. Um, so let's go ahead and click on New Project, and the New Project window will come up here. And you have a, um, uh, an array of options that we can choose from. Under the templates, uh, we have the Visual C Sharp, which is what we're going to be working with. And uh, uh, right here, we have uh, some more options of what type of application we're going to be writing. You have the Windows Forms application which is will give you a GUI so you can have buttons and text boxes and certain things like that. Um, what we're going to focus on is we're going to use do everything in the council. That's pretty much like a command prompt window and the reason for that is it's it's uh, much easier to to teach or even learn um, the language when you're not distracted by other things such as getting you know buttons to work how to how to get things to display within a form um, and whatnot so most of the programs we create will be um, in the council application we eventually will get into um, the win form applications um, in, in later lessons so let's go ahead and make sure council application is selected um, this here will be our project name. Um, let's just make it something simple. We'll call it Hello World. This is where the uh, the projects are going to be stored. Um, I created a, a, a folder called Learning C Sharp. You can put it wherever you want. Uh, I, think, I don't think the default location is like My Documents, Visual Studio 2012 Projects or something like that. If you want to leave the default, that's fine and then we'll have the, the actual solution name and uh, we'll just call that one um, learning C sharp Oops. hello world and I'll show you the difference in the two names here in a second so once we have that filled out go ahead and click OK and it will create our project for us and that's it right there. Our project is now created. Now if you come over here and look at the, the Solution Explorer, um, in the Solution we have one project. That one project is called Hello World. And you can see the Solution is titled Learning C Sharp Dash Hello World. That's where those two names come into play there. And um, we have the properties here, which we won't talk about now. References, app config. Um, the file we will talk about right now is the program.cs. That is our our main file we'll, we'll, where we'll be typing right now. And that's uh, right over here. You can see the tab here as program.cs. If you click the X to close that, you can go back over to your your solution explorer, double click on it, it'll open it right back up. Now don't be too concerned about the text or the syntax or any of the lines of code that are in here right now. We're not uh, here to learn all that uh, in this particular lesson. And we will come back and revisit um, what all this stuff actually is. Right now we're just kind of going through and, and, and uh, getting you used to the, the, the IDE, the Visual Studio 2012 here, um, what code looks like and, and, and things like that. So for our first program, what we're going to do is we're going to do uh, very simple. We're going to display some text into the council and uh, and uh, and call that good. So what we're going to do here um, is we'll go ahead and type system dot council 
dot right line and the text we want to display is welcome to C sharp programming so system dot council dot right line parenthesis double quote welcome to C sharp programming double quote closing parenthesis semicolon semicolon um, is going to be required for most at, at the end of most lines um, um, it's called a line terminator. It, it lets the um, the compiler, the thing that actually crunches all this together to make a program, let it know that hey, that's the end of that line there. So once we have that typed in there, uh, there's a couple different ways we can actually execute this program. Um, one, you can go up to debug and click start debugging, or you can see over here they have uh, the shortcut keys F5. Um, let's go ahead and press F5 and. It may look like it didn't do anything, but since the program is so very simple, um, it started up, executed, and closed right away. Well, we didn't get to see anything. What what fun was that? Well, uh, what we need to do here is we actually need to pause the screen for a second. Um, so in order to do that, we'll do system dot console dot read line. Read line is um, it's going to wait for uh, some type of input, and in this case, we're just going to have it's just going to Pause the screen and wait us for to press wait for us to press enter space or something. Um, so go ahead and uh, let's build the uh, build the program and start it again. So like I said, and click start debugging right here. And now you'll see the console appears. There's our line that we put out there, and now it paused for us. If you go ahead and press enter, the program will close, and we're right back to our coding screen. That's going to be pretty much it for the lesson one, the uh, very intro here. Um, well, what we're going to talk about in lesson two, well, let's go back to that other slide there real quick. Let's see what we uh, what we have there. It's just talking about creating the workspace. Oh, one thing that you might also come across to is might ask you to register the actual program. Um, it, by default, it has a 30-day trial. Um, you can extend that to 90 days um, simply by doing an a email type registration. Uh, very simple and straightforward. So in the, in the next lesson, what we're going to be talking about is we're going to uh, discuss basic variable types. That'll be the string, the integer, the boolean. Um, we're going to declare those variable types and we're going to put them to use. We'll talk uh, about code commenting and then we'll modify the program we just created um, to use the types of variables that we just talked about and uh, implement a very simple if statement to control our program flow. So I like, uh, hope you uh, enjoyed what you uh, watched here today and uh, uh, hope to see you in lesson two.